Life after Google. It uh, echoes la life after television, which, believe it or not, this month in Vanity Fair was included on the contents page, uh, representing me as an original gangster futurist. And who inspired uh, original gangster Hollywood futurist who inspired Ari Emanuel. But Life After Television also said that the dominant computer of the future would be as portable as your watch, as personal as your wallet. It would recognize speech. It would navigate streets. It would collect your news and your mail. It just might not do windows, but it would do doors, open doors to your future. And Steve Jobs passed it around to his colleagues back in the early 90s. So I like to think I had some uh, influence on the rise of these devices we all carry around. So there. But the real original gangster futurist is Satoshi, as we all know. And, and we're here to celebrate CoinGeek 2020. That's 2020. That's, all right. 2020 <laughs> Satoshi vision. Now, there's a twofold scandal in the world economy. One is the total collapse of internet security. It makes everybody paranoid. We're scared of routers and switches which have, from Huawei, which have been made, uh, put on the, and, and the entities list, along with weapons of mass destruction and uh, poison gas. So, the breakdown of internet security is a disease that is uh, infecting the whole world economy. And, and that has to be corrected. The other great crisis is the scandal of money. Today, the world's biggest industry is not transportation or food or medicine or anything you might imagine. It's currency trading. And uh, daily currency trading, I've been saying all around the world that it's $5.1 trillion a day, which is uh, 25 times all global GDP and 73 times roughly all global trade in goods and services. But uh, the Bureau of of Bank for International S Settlements has done its new tri triennial survey, and it shows that in the last three years, uh, currency trading has risen from $5.1 trillion a day by 30% to $6.6 .6 trillion a day. And this is totally worthless activity. It doesn't even stop trade wars endless hedging of any transaction across borders. It's a fiasco. It's a scandal of money. And the great thing about the blockchain and uh, Bitcoin SV is that it offers the promise of solving both these great crises, the P Ponzi money and porous internet, where all the money and power rises to the top. All the data rises to the top where it can be hacked. And that's the scandal of internet security, which in 2019 was worst ever by a factor of four. So when people imply that the blockchain is some uh, exotic and extreme solution to non-problems that have been completely mastered by all the wise men and the central banks and, and the governments of the world. We all know that's wrong. 
The sign of a broken paradigm is the more money you spend, the worse the results. Internet security spending rises roughly 20% a year. The result, the number of breaches explodes. Currency trading increases 30% every three years. Result, trade wars and monetary crises. The remedy for both, what Daniel Patrick Moynihan, an American professor, politician, used to call a unity, a solution that, apply, that changes a number of different problematics is a unity, and Satoshi's blockchain is a unity that addresses this core uh, problem of uh, the world economy. And it all springs, ultimately, from the information theory of economics. Wealth is knowledge. That's the crucial thing we all intuitively understand around here. We know wealth is knowledge because the Neanderthal in his cave had all the material resources we have today. The difference between our age and the Stone Age is entirely the increase in knowledge. Wealth is knowledge. Growth, if wealth is knowledge, what's growth? Growth is learning. It's tested knowledge. It's knowledge that can be falsified. It's represented by the learning curve, which is the most thoroughly documented phenomenon in business strategy. With every doubling of total units sold, costs drop between 20 and 30%. Grow, and, and it applies across all industries. Moore's law is essentially a learning curve. Growth is learning. And learning is tested. It only, learning can only happen if it can be falsified in Popperian terms. It, learning in the economy translates the scientific method into economics. With every venture, the entrepreneurial test of a new idea. And uh, it has to be falsifiable. It has to be able to fail. It has to go bankrupt. It's good that 46% of all the cryptocurrencies died. This registers learning. And uh, when government tries to guarantee growth, it actually prohibits growth, because all growth is unexpected bits. It's surprisal. That's what information, according to information theory, is surprise. It's unexpected bits. If the government tries to guarantee the economy, the result is to stifle learning and stifle growth. Guaranteed growth is oxymoronic and futile. So if wealth is knowledge, growth is learning, money is time. And uh, time is what remains scarce when everything else grows abundant. Time. I want to quote uh, 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 Carl Sandburg here. Time is the coin of your life. It is the only coin that you have, and only you can determine how it will be spent. Be careful lest you let other people spend it for you. Money is time. Time isn't money. In order to translate time into money, it takes the ingenuity of people like Satoshi. And that's what we all have to do. This 
problem has not been completely solved yet. Translation of money in, uh, time into money is, is a difficult challenge, but money is time. Money is essentially tokenized time. It allows this scarcity that applies to all economic activity ubiquitously across the economy. It allows you to translate that into transactions and prioritizations across the economy. Money is time. And uh, this concept of money is time has launched an economic revolution. It's uh, time prices. And time prices measure value by the number of hours you have to spend to buy a good and service. To calculate time prices, you use all nominal numbers, nominal GDP, nominal uh, commodity prices against nominal wages and salaries and you get hours and minutes that are applicable throughout time and space and represent the true prices. And they allow a real revolution. We dispose of consumer price indexes, GDP deflators, purchasing power, parity, negative interest rates. We don't have negative interest rates. That's just total nonsense. And gold is a time price. And uh, uh, the, that uh, guy with a pick and shovel could uh, deliver gold just as fast and just as, as uh, giant mines can, uh, with automated equipment can do it today. The time it takes to mine an incremental troy ounce of gold hasn't changed in uh, millennia. And when you use time prices, you find out that economic growth rates have been far faster than anybody has imagined. We have not had inflation. We've had steady, benign deflation accomplished by these learning curves ubiquitously uh, demonstrable across economies around the world. And uh, the uh, China, everybody assumes that the Chinese communist government has been exaggerating the rate of economic growth accomplished by their entrepreneurs and their free zones. But uh, the fact is, uh, measured by time prices, uh, the Chinese economy has been growing substantially faster than anybody has understood and the, as has the U.S. economy. So the law of abundance is humans are minds, not mouths, and uh, more population growth means more resources, more abundance. Minds uh, increase knowledge and wealth. And this is the abundance index uh, which uh, Gail Pooley and Marion Tupi have contrived. And uh, what minds can do is transformative. This is uh, the amazing accomplishment in, in Shenzhen, the biggest free zone in China, and now the center of the world economy. And systems of the world, that's what govern uh, these kinds of innovations. And this is, we're now engaged in forging a new system of the world. Google's system of the world, uh, the prevailing system at the moment is search and big data and cloud computing and machine minds and singularities. All for free. You transcend the market really by having no customers. Your only customers are advertisers. And that, I believe, is a failed economic model. And uh, Zhou Xiaochuan, uh, 
presented a new system of the world in 2019 to end freely floating currencies and create a new global money. And he, he's the chief of the Chinese Central Bank, which refused essentially to float for 20 years and thus caused uh, all the other central banks to charge it with man money manipulation. Actually, it was refusing to manipulate money. But at the same time and for the same reason, a response to the crisis of 2008, uh, the Bitcoin program was launched as a new system of the world, as an alternative to the culture of money manipulation that caused uh, the crash of 2008. And with these figures, uh, Wu Jainan at Bitmain was a crucial figure in the whole revolution, I believe. He uh, invented the application-specific integrated circuits that performed more uh, hashes a second than any computer in the history of the world. It's an application-specific device, but it was an amazing feat that uh, Bitmain accomplished when they saw that uh, Bitcoin mining was going to be the great new mining opportunity in the world economy. The systems of the world can change, and you're changing them. This is what Satoshi Vision is about. It's, it's changing systems of the world. And uh, in 2008, the world's four companies in market cap were these familiar names, like uh, China Petroleum and China Industrial Bank and you know, the usual names. Today, completely four different names, 10 years later. And how did it happen? In an information age, economies can change as fast as minds can change. And uh, in 2023, those could be, all of them are experimenting heavily with blockchains or the cryptocosm. Or possibly TAN, Telegram Online Network which uh, has 285 million Telegram users to create a new community for a new blockchain. Uh, the SEC uh, refused to approve it in the United States, so it's had some uh, problems. But regulators are always going to be resistant to any radical change. So. We're uh, moving from Google life to the afterlife. And Google's first law was focus on users, communications first, and give them free stuff. The law of the cryptocosm is security first, and nothing is free. Uh, I. The most exciting part of Craig's uh, speech yesterday to me was the stress on micropayments. This is a way of having customers, which means propagating learning, which means expanding knowledge and fueling growth. And that's the, uh, rather than avoiding customers, avoiding having specific liabilities to people you serve, and test, uh, test it in the market. And uh, so this is uh, an important, uh, one of the most important contributions of Satoshi vision. The cryptocosm law is not just to serve customers doing one thing really well, but to create a secure foundation for customers to do many things really, really well. It, a platform, this is a platform that can expand opportunities around the entire world economy. Google law is democracy on the web works. 
but Google is a hierarchy. And uh, in the cryptocosm law, majority rule is a 51% attack, a catastrophe. The blockchain is a heterarchy, not a hierarchy. And you don't really need voting if you distribute the power widely enough, which is the genius of the blockchain. You can make money without doing evil, is Google's idea. And the Google, and the Google idea of Bitcoin evil is the colossal waste of money and CO2 emissions in mining. But, but that is a trivial problem, if indeed it's a problem at all. The biggest waste, from the point of view of the cryptocosm, is $6.6 .6 trillion a day of currency trading. Google Law, there's always more information out there, and we can get it by giving away our services for free. But, uh, cryptocosm law, shouldn't the information be owned by its creators, not by its distributors? Google law, the need for information crosses all borders. But the cryptocosm is global also, but it respects the borders of your computer. Security is a property of the user and device not the network or even the nation. Cryptocosm law, we provide an architecture of security and timestamp factuality which enables our customers to be great. Your face there. So the Google system of the world is broken in 10 different ways and the cryptocosm disperses the clouds and remedies the Google system of the world with sky computing, where all your devices contribute to a global computer capability which is enshrined in immutable facts on the blockchain. And uh, one blockchain already solved a crucial problem of the U.S. economy, really, the collapse of IPOs, initial public offerings, down 90% in 20 years. People talk about a thriving U.S. stock market. The U.S. stock market has 50% fewer public companies than it did uh, 20 years ago. And uh, most of the demand uh, recycles cash from the companies themselves. As much as 80% of the new demand for shares, it comes from uh, buybacks by the dominant companies. And uh, we had $20 billion of ICOs. And this was a brilliant existence proof that blockchains could solve absolutely central problems. They now, you know, improvements are needed, as we all know, and that's why you're here. And Satoshi uh, SV is a new uh, solution. But uh, we did have one tremendous success. That $20 billion is what has endowed this great movement around the world. So the remedy for the scandal of money is money as a measuring stick. It can't be used as a magic wand, it's a measuring stick. Irreversible time is translated into the economy through money. And time is irreversible, it can't be stolen or hoarded, it can't be printed by central banks, it can't be, um, it's distributed with remorseless equality to rich and poor alike 24 hours a day, Time is the source of all measurement. And if money is a measuring stick, it has to be based on time. All the système international physical constants that underlie the meter, the second, the kilogram, all these different uh, entities in the measuring sticks that make possible 
the physical transactions of world trade uh, make it possible to conceive chips in Israel and put them in systems in Cupertino and, and manufacture them in, in uh, Taiwan and sell them in China, you know, what, all that is only possible because of, because the second, the meter, the kilogram, the mole, the, all the various crucial uh, temperatures, degrees, Kelvin, all these involve frequencies in some way. And involving frequencies, it means they're ultimately based on time. And money, too, if it's going to be real as a measuring stick, must, must reflect the scarcity of time. Well, we may not go into quantum computing. I like quantum, uh, but Huawei chief says the blockchain's worthless because of quantum computing. But quantum computing won't just break primes. Quantum computing can protect data. And quantum computing is really something of a misnomer. I wrote a book in 1980, in the 1980s called Microcosm, the Quantum Era in Economics and Technology. And all computers are quantum computers. What we call quantum computers today are really new analog computers. There are new forms of analog computing. And the reason analog computing hasn't prevailed is because it imposes all the burdens on input-output. It moves the, the burden of the computation from the processing of symbols to the input and output in the real world. And uh, so quantum computing uh, has the same problems of all analog computing, and I, I, don't, I don't think it poses any problem to the... Uh, blockchain, even if uh, Google has quantum supremacy, I believe that uh, Pan Jianwei, who entangled qubits over 1,200 miles over satellites, is really a more important accomplishment. It uses quantum entanglement to preserve information rather than uh, to achieve these uh, mostly uh, hypothetical results of uh, the quantum supremacy at Google. My daughter wrote a book on this, so I, this is a commercial uh, interruption. Uh, <laughs> but it's a great book. It's the... Uh, it's called The Age of Entanglement. And uh, so I believe Satoshi's SV is a remedy for the poorest pyramid of the internet stack, a hierarchy that allows all money and power to be sucked up, in the, up to the top, all data to be sucked up to, to the top where it can be hacked. And SV is a heterarchy with unlimited scaling, e-payments, micropayments, wallets, and a cadaster for the internet of things. Uh, I, th I believe that is really what the blockchain is. It's a cadaster, which is uh, a collection, a ledger, really, of all different forms of uh, entities. Uh, and uh, it's a cadaster global ledger. It's 2020 vision for the future. And with uh, money in the internet fixed by the cryptocosm, we can fulfill the monetary vision of Satoshi and restore the primacy of time in our global economy so other people aren't spending it for you all the time. Central banks have launched $250 trillion of debt, which is uh, being uh, imposed on all our descendants. And uh, this is the most successful uh, publication of Life After Google. It's a uh, number two book in China for a while. 
and was judged the best social science book in China last year. So that's ex exciting. And, uh, and uh, Xi Jinping actually endorsed blockchain. So, so there's movement in China despite all the bad news we hear. Uh, there's move, positive news for the blockchain in China. And I've, I've spent a lot of time in China and met Craig there for the first time and, uh, at the EDGE conference, and it's exciting. Thank you. Hi, guys. I'm Johanna Botta with CoinGeek.com, and I am here with George Gilder, or AKA Mr. Coin Geek Gangster, original, go or original, original coin, gangster original, coin there geek. you go. See, now you can do it all by yourself. Original Gangster Coin Geek. <laughs> all right, so, George. With Craig Wright. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so let's talk about him since you're bringing him up. Brightest Bitcoin mine or one of the brightest Bitcoin mines? Craig is is a charismatic genius and there are lots of geniuses surrounding this movement which is why it's going to prevail and why it's going to solve the Biggest two key challenges of the world economy one Sorry. is the utter collapse of internet security mm -hmm. eight billion breaches last year yeah. just complete catastrophe and the other is the scandal of money 6.7 trillion dollars a day of currency trading is 25 mm -hmm. times all global gdp every day and it doesn't even stop trade wars it doesn't even stop endless hedging it's a complete scandal and the blockchain is a unity a single solution that can address both these crises the crisis of internet security the crisis of ponzi money and i think it's going to prevail because the answer to all our questions it's the answer to all our questions i asked one of our other interviewees earlier if in 2009 they ever foresaw this coming did you well i saw a lot of transformation you know i'd written life after television back in 1990 which said the dominant computer of the future would be as portable as your watch yeah. personal as your wallet it would recognize speech it would navigate streets. It would collect your news and your mail. It might not do windows, but it do doors, open yeah. doors to your future. That was uh, passed around by Steve Jobs and probably influenced in some small way the world in which we currently look at our smartphones every 35 seconds. All right, yeah. well, thank you so much. Mm -hmm.